Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. F. Scott Feel, and I've got with me today longtime friend and one of the smartest people I know in the world of healthcare and business education, uh, Yogi Matharu. Yogi, tell us a little bit about your educational journey and how it's led you to where you're at today. Thanks. Uh, my undergraduate degrees in exercise science. Uh, over time, uh, I had a couple of uh, big situations where I had a, a friend in a, a pretty bad car accident. He had a spinal cord injury. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, at the hospital with him. Uh, and then another friend had a less severe car accident, and he ended up uh, having an orthopedic PT experience. And I got to know, I would drive him to those appointments, and uh, I got to uh, meet some people and really learn about uh, what does a physical therapist do outside of a hospital setting. But both of those uh, experiences were pretty transformative for me. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, I, I loved what it, what was going on and I loved the stories and this particular PT gave me a lot of guidance uh, really in in uh, probably five or ten minutes every every time I went in he'd kind of give me a little story and tell me things while he was working with my friend and uh, it made me choose uh, orthopedics and uh, orthopedic PT um, so I think I I always uh, tell that story for the reason of uh, you know, you might think you're just talking to some young kid, you know, but you might be influencing their their longtime career choices. Yeah, I love that. And now you've gone on to not only do PT, but now you teach as well, and you help out with the uh, the clinical aspect of of things within education. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So uh, after I I graduated, I I got I was in the first DPT class of uh, at USC starting in 1995. Uh, when I graduated, I, I can tell you my my initial enthusiasm started slowing in that first year, primarily because I was not surrounded by PTs that were really kind of pushing the envelope and they were kind of low low functioning. It was it was a hospital outpatient and a hospital inpatient, so I, I had great experiences, great patients, great colleagues, but it just didn't feel like we were pushing at the uh, at the at the level that I had thought we would. So I uh, had, a, again, another chance dinner, and someone told me, well, why don't you apply to the residency program uh, at USC? North? And, and so I was uh, the second year of residence and, uh, again, had a great experience, graduated, stayed on at USC, uh, eventually became a clinic director. And uh, then through that, over time, again, residency director, and then as opportunities came up, I started teaching in a, in a class that was really focused on, on the business side of PT. It was more healthcare systems. And uh, through that, uh, eventually uh, got involved in doing guest lectures. One of my areas of interest is, is chronic pain, complex orthopedic conditions, primary care. So over, those, uh, over the time, I started lecturing on those things. And eventually now I teach in a differential diagnosis class and I teach a class in healthcare systems. I love it, man. What a journey. One of the things that that you you kind of help with now is USC has a clinic that is also used for teaching and educating, right? So it's it's kind of like a business and a class all wrapped into one. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, I love talking about this one because I think um, the the business of physical therapy always gets a bad rap. And I think the the problem is if you train clinicians, but then don't teach them how to be good clinicians and good business people, uh, it really it really destroys their ability to provide value. And the only way we we can generate uh, any income for ourselves uh, and for the health system is by by demonstrating value to a patient. Uh, and so what what I what I do is we made a decision in our uh, practices that we wanted to create a, a faculty practice that was uh, evidence based. It was innovative. It provided the highest quality of care, but as a requirement, we were not going to take any money from the academic program to do that. We wanted to pay our own way. And part of that is because we should be able to pay our own way if we do things right. And the second piece is we shouldn't be teaching students if we don't have the ability to pay our own way. How can we tell students go out and practice in an ethical uh, in a, in a way, manner, but then with our demonstration is, but you can't make ends meet if you do that. So this has been a big portion of our of our program. We have started with outpatient practices, uh, and now we also provide services to to our hospital system. And I can tell you more about that if you like. Uh, but I think the 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 key message I would have is is a a student is not a clinician until they understand the entire process from the from how do you schedule the patient to how do you deliver great care, how do you communicate that care to other people in the health system? And how do you set that patient up for long-term success? And how do you get yourself paid for that, uh, that service? And if, if we neglect this business aspect of, of PT and of, of healthcare, what ends up happening is, you know, uh, consultants are going to come in and they're going to try to tell us how to do it. Uh, as you're already seeing, lots of large companies are coming in and taking over and saying, you guys are not maximizing your profits properly. And, and what we'll end up with is systems that, that the PTs aren't in charge of delivering the care. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Yogi, I'm a little biased. I teach the business and admin course for us as well. So, you know, this this is near and dear to my heart. But I, I think that the main thing here, the main takeaway, and the one thing I love that you guys are doing is that you're teaching through experiential learning and really hands-on work what the whole user experience looks like, right? The whole patient journey from, you know, getting scheduled to staying through a plan of care to discharge, right? And like what that can look like. And the other thing too is not only are the students getting that that hands-on experience, but they also are getting to see some of the, the options that are out there to them, right? It's not just, you know, hospital-based, uh, you know, outpatient or, you know, home health, or, or you can do, you know, your acute care or your inpatient, there's other options available to us as physical therapists, right? I mean, I've interviewed people that were PTs that were CEOs of hospitals at this point, right? I mean, just knowing what's available to us and knowing all the opportunities that are out there makes us much more well-informed. And this new generation is going to have to be that way if they're going to want to combat the student loan issues they got coming down the road. So, uh, you know, how, how do you go about educating these students on all things business related in the healthcare world? Well, I think you uh, I'm going to I'm going to just comment on what you said first is I think you're, you're dead on. I think the idea is we are not a technical profession where the only thing we do is provide a service. We, we're professionals. We have a, a lot of knowledge and that knowledge can be translated to helping a patient and our health system and our economy to improve by improving the health of our, of our patients, the health of society really. And I think if we think of ourselves as technicians only, I think that's, that's maybe 40 years ago. Now, if you look at most of the major healthcare problems, and I'll answer what you're saying of how do we teach them uh, this is, in our healthcare systems class, what we're really looking at is, it's an evidence-based program. What we're looking at is there are, there are three perspectives and we have different classes for each of these perspectives. There is a patient's perspective, there is a provider's perspective, and then there's kind of a healthcare systems perspective. And we're teaching it from the healthcare pers uh, system perspective. So when you look at, at the world's problems and we say there are issues that patients are having, our health system is inadequately addressing those problems. Where can PT help? And so the first part of it is let's just understand the basics. Let's understand what does it take to bring a patient into your clinic, 
how do you uh, manage that patient and how do you how do you discharge that patient? That's the simple part. There's lots of pieces of compliance. There's lots of pieces of risk management. There's lots of pieces of, of the mechanics of that process. Probably the biggest issue that most students have is they don't really understand truly how to bill because most of the time billing is taught by the, their CI who got taught by their CI who got taught by their CI. And a lot of that has been 30, 40 years old. Never was it looked at as does this unit that I'm billing really correspond to what I did? So I think th those pieces are really important. The other pieces are how do we do things correctly so that we are, we are being paid for the services we provided, but also how do we make sure we don't make a mistake and inaccurately bill something or inappropriately do something that gets us into trouble? So we, we sort of jokingly say, we want you to be able to understand how to keep yourself out of trouble while also uh, collecting the revenue that, that you deserve. When you look at it from, from the standpoint of, there's a very simple piece, which is very methodical of, of education of how to, how to evaluate and treat and bill. But then there's the broader picture of what can PT bring to a health system? So I think uh, a lot of people are, are really down on PT right now. And I try to teach, no, I think this is the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. Because for the first time, all the science, all the data, all the insurance companies' data shows that, that PT is, is a higher value, lower total cost of care, and provides higher outcomes than other procedures. Now you add to that that we have less complications, we have better long-term health change, patients uh, are more and more interested in non-surgical, non-medication management, and really long-term care, not just, not just let's treat this episode. So I think it's, it's a beautiful opportunity for the first time we can really use what we know to impact a patient's health condition, not just their ankle sprain. And uh, I, so I, I can ramble on for hours on this. And now for a quick shout out to our newest sponsor, Varela Financial. If you're a physical therapist and you have student loan debt, you got to talk to these guys. What makes them unique is that they view financial planning like running hurdles on a track. And for PTs, the first hurdle many of us run into is student loan debt. Varela Financial will help you get over that hurdle. They not only take the time to explain to you which plans you individually qualify for and how those plans work, but they also take the time to show you what your individual case looks like mapped out within each option. So if you're looking for help on your student loan debt or any area of personal finances, we recommend working with them. I use Varela Financial personally, and they were able to help me lower my student loan repayment from about $1,800 a month down to about $135 per month simply by finding the right repayment plan that best fit me, my family, and our life goals. You can check them out at varelafinancial.com. Link is in the show notes if you need it for reference and tell them the HET podcast crew sent you. And now back to the show. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, you know, 100%. And the, the thing that kind of has interested me over the last couple of years as I've transitioned into academia full time, it just seems like business and, and healthcare don't mix. You know, it seems like they're oil and water a little bit. You know, it's like, uh, I, I just, I feel like the black sheep a lot of times when I sit there and try to talk to to a lot of people in academia about business, you know, that's like, uh, oh, well, that's not our thing. You know, we don't need to be worried about that when in reality we do. I mean, you know, you and I have worked together uh, in, in PPS in the private practice section uh, before and I personally, I think that's a great resource for for people, students or for for professors who maybe don't, you know, grasp the enormity of the business aspect of healthcare and 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 how to teach that. Or even if they don't want to teach it, at least they can refer people to it to kind of gather more information, you know, and so we don't have to be so afraid of it or, you know, poo poo it. We can just say, hey, it exists. It's out there. You have to know about private practice, you know, settings and, and how we get paid at the very least in all settings, because it is a business, whether you like it or not, healthcare is a business at this point. You know, we need to know these, these aspects. And I think, you know, for me, I think private practice section was a great resource. I don't, you know, I don't know your feelings on it, but the, you know, that's, yeah, that's the, where I felt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so a few years ago, I spoke at a Graham sessions for private practice section. And I, I, I made a, uh, an argument that we should really change the name to the business section. Yeah. 
And, it, and, the, and the reason I said it is not because when you evoke the word private practice, people who are in different areas of PT think that, that, that it's not for them. However, I think really the issue is it's not about how do we get paid and how do we make more money? I think when we start talking like that, everyone gets a little turned off. But the real situation is, you know, like it's this idea of no margin, no mission, right? We've got to keep the doors open. How do we correctly value our services and get paid for that? How do we collect that money? How do we use that money to, to provide resources for the, for the facility and for the people who work there? So I think that that's the first part. But the second part of that is, and the broader part of that is, if you don't care at all about private practice and you're saying, no, I just want to provide the best care for my patients. Well, the best care for your patient involves resources. If you don't have those resources, then you can't provide the best care. Then when you add on top of that, the very best clinicians, they do have to understand these basics. Otherwise, they're not going to be in business. And when you say, I provide the best care, but my boss doesn't understand it. And I, and I would say, well, if you understand the metrics that your boss is looking at, now you can do better yourself. And in the sense that when, you, when your boss says to you, hey, you're not billing enough units. Well, that doesn't feel very good. And that doesn't make you want to want to work for her. But if you say, if your boss comes and says, look, we're not making enough money to pay for your salary and for the resources you're consuming. And then you look through that and you say, all right, well, what do you need? And you say, well, I, we need you to see X number of patients. We need you to bill in these ways. We need to make sure we don't get denials. We want to make sure your notes make sense such that they actually uh, document what you did and the justification for the medical need for that. And if you could do that, uh, well, then that's value to me. And then if I if you provide value to me, I can pay you more because we're going to collect more. So I think I think understanding it from the perspective of you don't have to run the business, but you got to understand the rules of the game you're playing. Yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, that's that's it right there. And I couldn't agree with you more on on calling it the business section because nowadays it's not necessarily about a little brick and mortar private practice. There's businesses out there. You can be an author, you can be a speaker, you can be a coach, you can be, you know, there's uh, telehealth. There's all these other options for, for physical therapists to be business owners. You know, it's not just a tiny little mom and pop clinic, you know, or a couple of clinics across the state. Like it's, there's other options for us to get into business for ourselves. So I think that, you know, expanding out to that. And it, and again, at the very least, knowing the basics of business principles and practices, right? Knowing the rules of engagement, knowing how business works, knowing how taxation works, it, it makes a world of difference, especially for, for a lot of these new grads and, and, you know, folks looking to go out and start their own business. If they have nowhere to start, no, no frame of reference, it can be scary. They can think like, oh, I don't know if I can start my own business. I don't, that seems like it's a lot, you know, but at the very least, you have to understand how, how business works. So well, I love I that the, the the business aspect that you that you speak of and understanding how business works again it goes to the idea of of, of value right I mean when I I didn't tell you you talked about education I also have an MBA and I got an MBA partly because uh, I was trained and uh, under the idea of hey if you have a chance to take a continuing education course and it's a a manual therapy course versus it's a business course always take the manual therapy course. And then over the years, what I found is all the best practices in our town were going out of business. And the ones who were sort of really good at the paperwork part, but not so good at the care, those were the clinics that, that were remaining. And I really thought about it. And I said, well, you know, if, if some of my mentors had better understood the business aspect, they'd still be around and the patients in the community would have been getting a better service. And instead, they're getting more of this really, uh, unfortunately, non-specialized, non quality care. Uh, and, and we sort of drove this. But and that was really what drove me to want to look at how do I make a better impact on our profession by by being able to to, to learn the language that, that that's required. And you mentioned private practice section. I think that's a great start because you can you can learn the vocabulary. Once you learn the vocabulary, you can read things and make more sense of it. When you can make more sense of it, then you can start to analyze it a little more closely. So I think it's it's a journey, just like like you couldn't be a PT without learning anatomy and learning the terms. Uh, similarly, if you don't spend a little bit of time on on the business, then you're probably not going to understand how how it all works. Yeah, a thousand percent. Well, Yogi, uh, 
it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, man, and just kind of hearing your takes on business. I love getting to to catch up with you. We, we, we ask all of our, our guests this one final question. And that question is, if you could change one aspect of higher education, whether it be DPT or otherwise, what aspect would you change and how would you change it? I'd say that is a, that is a big question. I mean, and I have lots of, lots of broad topics, but as, as it relates to, to PT, I think the, the most obvious question is cost, right? Uh, the, the cost of PT education has gotten so high the situation with with uh, CMS in particular and Medicare lowering our rates year over year, it's making it difficult to manage in a business that we're in. So how could we change that? I think we we should be creative in in how we deliver care. USC has has uh, I think been a leader in in uh, changing to some forms of hybrid education, really optimizing the way education is delivered, at the same time protecting our profession by not doing it in a way that compromises quality. So I think we need to to utilize the technologies for for the best case treatments. At the same time, can we teach people faster? Can we get them competent faster? Can we assess them uh, more more uh, uh, rapidly? I think there's there's opportunities in that in that manner. I don't know that we're going to be able to lower costs without compromising uh, some of what we're doing. But I think over time we'll develop those skills and we'll be able to do that. Yeah, that's uh, cost is usually the number one most given answer. Uh, I always love hearing people's takes on how they think they they should go about fixing it you know because uh it is multifactorial that's the the end game there is that it's 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 not just one aspect we have five or six different things all going on against us that we have to figure out so it's uh definitely going to be an uphill battle but uh luckily there's a lot of good people out there fighting the good fight uh much like yourself yogi where can people reach out to you if they have follow-up questions or they just want to learn more about the uh faculty-led clinic and the uh, the business stuff that you you do where where can they uh, reach out to you and follow up with questions and stuff yeah uh well uh we just did uh, a talk called ask me anything and uh, and if you can uh post a youtube link that would be excellent absolutely we'll put that is, in the show notes and then uh my last name matharu at usc.edu is my email welcome any any comments questions and uh I'd love to, if other people are interested in the same topic, I'd love to work with people. Great. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes as well. And uh, Yogi, always a pleasure, man. I, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. Dr. F. Scott Field here, and we don't do this nearly enough. Uh, I wanted to thank you as an audience for being here, for listening to the shows. Without you guys, we wouldn't have anybody to geek out with uh, over education and learning and teaching and educating. So. Thank you for for being here, for being you know faithful listeners over the years. Uh, also, if possible, we'd love to ask a favor. We don't do this often, but if you could leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to this podcast, we would greatly appreciate it. It helps boost our rankings and our algorithm and really just helps get this message out to more people out there in healthcare education who who may need, you know, some of the episodes and the experts that we interview. So if you could, like I said, leave a rating and review, we would greatly appreciate it. And we will see you on the next show.